Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the quarterfinals of RBT5 right here on Vanilla Stream. We have a great match in store today on this neutral LA server between teams Envy and Aquilix. That's your third seed and your 11th seed playing right here for the right to play in the... I actually just have in-game... Uh, on as well, so I was getting another message there from someone in Spectate, not exactly sure who it was, but someone who's as enthusiastic as we are for this match. It's going to be a best of one here on the Parish on Favelle Boys LA, and for this wondrous matchup, I am joined by the one and only Mr. K3. K3, how are you today? I am doing absolutely fantastic here, prepared for this very international game. Three different countries represented, or no, four different countries represented in this uh in this here cast we've got we're gonna have uh what country is dana from again dana is uh, somewhere in europe i'm not exactly sure the exact country all right well we have the eu we have australia we have south korea and we have japan uh envy of course being comprised of some of the most prolific uh, players from the asia region in the history of left 4 dead obviously you fly by in kimchi you know like there needs the introduction if you have paid attention to left 4 dead to competitive scene since you know like 2011 but uh and then you know you've got like prove and kane who even though they haven't played as many north american tournaments as uh their the rest of their envy counterparts have really proven time and time again that they are an absolute force to be reckoned with going against the top team in the history of australian competitive left for dead uh aqualax who are playing with their european counterpart dana and yeah this is just going to be a game to behold i think Indeed it is, and the winner of this game is going to advance to play Team 44 Biceps. There was an absolutely stupendous match earlier today between 44 Biceps and Evo that saw Team 44 Biceps take that game by a cumulative total of less than 100 points between home and away. So that was an extremely close match, of course. We always love to see that in terms of both home and away games and neutral games. But neutral games do have a bit more pressure than that home and away, just because everything that happens on this server is going to be it. We are not going to be playing the Parish finale at all, so it's whoever's going to win on 1-4 to four here. Of course, Parish map 1, not usually the map that creates a huge delta unless one team gets wiped on a tank and the other team makes a safe room. But K3, who do you think is going to have the upper hand in this matchup in front of us? Well, I mean, Team NV clearly has a very, very minor ping advantage. I think that skill-wise, this is going to be very, very close. I think that historically, Team NV has played, you know, a pretty cautious game style. And I think that could really come into uh, a big importance in this match because, you know, when you're playing only four maps on high ping both sides, it's every single map and every single tank fight is extremely crucial. If you get wiped one time, it's absolutely do or die, and all of a sudden you could be in a a wiper game over situation so i think that type of cautious really precise survivor gameplay is going to be very important for both teams and uh i you know i don't know like if you're looking at the the history of, of left 4 dead then you know you can't argue with nb's overall record Exactly, and the biggest addition that we've seen in terms of Envy's roster for those keeping score at home is that they added Flyby back to their roster for the elimination rounds in RBT5, so we had not played with them over the seven weeks of Swiss, and now their lineup does look a little bit different tonight, also just because Deck is not playing. Their captain uh, originally was going to maybe cast this game, but then it was something where we had to be like, you know, in the playoffs like this, you want to have two casters who are just as impartial as possible, and K3 and I are definitely going to be able to lock that down as Team Envy and Team Aquilix are getting ready to ready up here. The tank is going to be pretty soon at 49%, and that is going to probably give Team Envy a chance to potentially chip the tank on his rotation, but we're going to be noticing that they do have just a slight ping advantage, as K3 said. However, I'll say this, Flyby has 127 uh, orange right there, and both Kane and Proof have like 147, 149, and then three players on Aquilix have between 144 and 147. So even though the colors are different, it is really not that much of a difference at all, just between about 10 and 20 points, and Dana's going to be the one who has to do a little bit more just with that 170 ping. But all these players, of course, are used to playing with those higher ping values in a way that North America honestly isn't, I'll say, compared to the rest of the international community. So I'm expecting some awesome gameplay from both sides on this. Plus, then, of course, we are going to be having two other games, I believe, to be played tomorrow from this quarterfinals bracket. But, of course, in RBT5 as well, it is single elimination. And with that being said, we are going to be going live. The GLHFs are coming out, and Team NV 
on the survivor side are going to start making their way from the dock here for Team Envy. It's Prove, Kimji, Flyby, and Kane. And who do we have for Quillux K3? For Quillux on the survivor side, we have a... I was about to call out the SI lineup, but it's iPad, Caution, DDA, and Zana. And we do have a hit coming in here. Treasure's going to get one punch out there. Boomer going out onto two very nicely. Hunter gets pretty much completely shut down, and that's just going to be a bit of chip out onto Prove there. Pretty nicely shut down there, the first attack of the game by Team MV. And yeah, not a lot of damage coming out there. But uh, we will see the first tank of this crucial game up in the hands of Dana. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that even though the that uh, the last Dana has been up for a while, I believe this is the first time that Parish is being played in tournaments since the update. So all the new ladders and rotations and all these things, I think this is the first time this, this is coming into play in tournament. And we do see the tank getting a little bit of chip going onto this roof rotation. What a great transition, though. He was able to hop between those three windows on that ledge and make his way to the top without having to transition up that ladder. And now Dana's going to be trying to figure out what lineup that he wants. Charger Hunter Jockey here can work, but personally, I would like to see a boomer. But Dana wants to see this, so he's going to be committing his way right in, trying to find that initial punch onto Ellis. Not quite finding it yet, however, as he's getting absolutely railed. Envy working their way away. Hunter is going to land. Charger and Jockey also both going in. Rochelle's going to get charged as Dina hits another punch on to fly by there, backing out and now getting another punch onto Rochelle, spreading the damage between those two survivors, K3, but no in cap off that first tank. Yeah, he opted to go for the survivors that were in the really good hiding spot and was not able to secure the corner that way. I feel like even though you take a lot more chip going down the hallway, I feel like overall usually it is maybe the better option to go down that hallway and just make sure that you can get that uh, guaranteed corner. As you saw, he was down to 30% before he even got any punches in. And yeah, overall, pretty solid job by the survivors to uh, come out of that with no end caps. We do have a hit coming out here. Really nice speed there going out on to Dana by Flyby. And that's going to be not a lot of damage again from that tank and or from that hit uh, after the tank. And yeah, the survivors are just going to be rolling in here. They might be able to make safe from off this. Honestly, of every hit on Parish, I think that Alley is one of the most dangerous for survivors if there were a Charger, but it was really just a 2-2 with pinners that didn't do a massive amount of work there by no fault of their own. And Envy are going to be getting almost into the safe room as Nick closes this door. 752 points on the first map of Parish by NV. That is a great survivor performance. No in-caps going out, and the real... Uh, difference between that first hit and that last hit is that they only took damage at the tank K3. They pretty much shut everything else down or with minimal damage going out onto them. So that's going to already put them in a nice position. And now we have to see how King of Books is going to be dealing with this high ping on Survivor's side. I will say this, however. I've seen Team Aquilux play at the highest level or near the highest level in the international community on this kind of ping all the time. It's something that they are pretty used to at this point. Even though they're in that 11th seed, don't underestimate them whatsoever here. They have been putting the work in in the community over the past few years and are trying to do the exact same thing right now. Dealing with a Charger, Smoker, Boomer, Hunter working its way in. Smoker is going to go in for an initial pull. Hunter is going to get shut down. Charger's going to miss. And the Smoker is just going to die right there at the end. Only 14 points of damage from that first hit. Yeah, important skeet by, uh, there by Caution to get on the Hunter because the Charger would have had a really good path to just get out the rest of the survivors for the cover. But yeah, as you, as you mentioned, um, Team Aquilex just like really, really putting in a lot of work. I remember like, you know, I've, I want to say, you know, like three and a half years ago, you see them paired up against you and you're like, okay, you know, I, like this isn't the worst pairing that I could have, but now you, there's, you're never safe. I've scrimmed against them, even on this level of ping, and it's just, you know, you're never safe. They are really experienced playing on high ping, and their survivor play has really uh, come leaps and bounds since the genesis of the team. Indeed, and now this tank for NV is already on the roof, transitioning in the exact same way Dina did. This is the one and only flyby here, looking to get this early wipe onto Aquilux. There is still Horde coming in from a delayed one boom, and that might choose the commit for him, and indeed it does. This other boomer is also going to land a one boom onto DDA. Early pull going out, flyby landing that first punch, Charger landing there as well, looking to spread the damage around, and this almost turns into a double cap. Rochelle getting hit across, beautiful Whoa. double punch by Flyby. Flyby going out on to Nick in that corner now for the lockup and getting the down. Going now for Coach in the corner, getting almost yes. another down. But there's the pause going out by Team Aquilix. He has so much health left. He he's he was at 50% by the time he was really like getting that corner. But he didn't take any damage. Like that horror came in, it was huge. And 
I guess apparently Patel crashed. Oh god. Uh, which is which creates potential complications because this tank was really, really going in Envy's favor. Not like that tank was just there. He had so much health that whole you, time that he was just getting those punches out. You so, hate to see it. That is the only yeah. thing to say at this point because that tank was doing absolute work, as you mentioned. But I think one reason for that, looking down the nose of my spectator camera here, right? Rochelle is frozen in the middle of those comments. So this is a circumstance where we might be seeing a round restart for Team Aquilix, depending on how they want to do this. I guess the other way to do it would be to have him load back in and have the tank just stare at them until Rochelle is able to move. But I'm almost certain that he is going to be stuck. Either that, or we will be keeping with this as a result. Let's see exactly what happens. Flyby still going for that corner as iPad does load back in, but he is indeed stuck there as Rochelle. This is just something that you do not want to see at all, especially in a match like this, as the tank who was just in there doing absolute work is now staring down Rochelle with a bear on her head as the tank is going to jump on her and throw a rock onto her as well before... Moving away, I think this does qualify for a restart. I mean, it's interest. It's like an interesting situation because the tank was in an almost, almost guaranteed web scenario by the time that Patel did crash, I believe. Like, I mean, I I guess that they are going to like push for the restart, which you know is reasonable. It's like, yeah, but I don't, now, I don't know, man. The other issue that we have now is that we did just load into map two. So, if they wanted to get a restart out there, as I gave them permission to do, um, that should have happened faster. And I don't know exactly what they're going to do now with that, unless they want to actually just go back to restart the entire campaign, have Envy dive off the dock, give them 752 points, and then we go with that again. But that's essentially what they would have to do at this point to make that happen. I, I like you said, though, I'm pretty sure, I'm fairly sure, right, that they were close to wiping on that prior to the crash, but I've been in situations before where people have crashed like that, and it just takes the entire wind out of the sails of the momentum of the game, right? And now, this could go either equally as good for Envy, or it could also, of course, go worse, and honestly, I've seen those restarts sometimes help and sometimes hinder, depending on what happens, but having Left 4 Dead 2 be the amazing game that it is this far, and it's, uh, it's, it's competitive shelf life, I guess you want to call it, right? That is something that just still absolutely sucks, because survivors can't do anything in that scenario yeah it's definitely one of those situations where as a survivor it can hinder you because you know like you were maybe like the crash kind of gets into your head a little bit and then kind of your momentum that you're trying to build gets thrown off and it's kind of hard to recollect yourself and stay super focused but on the other hand they were almost completely wiped i like i am hard struck to believe that there's a version of that where you know, Team Aqualax come out of that tank fight with, you know, even like three downs at minimum. But, uh, you know, so I mean, like if you're NV, you're like, hey, I don't, man, I don't want to restart. We were doing really well on that tank. We don't want to give them a second chance to, to shut us down. Maybe that boomer doesn't land and maybe, you know, this time our tank gets one in cap and it's, you know, and it's game on. But I guess it's, you know, you, you do the best with the hand that you're dealt. And, you know, this is the game we signed up to play these past few years, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's unfortunate for Team Eclipse, too. It's like, basically, what they should do is, yeah, spawn the tank and then do 20 damage to Caution, and then on the next half, uh, Envy will dive off and we'll set the scores in the next safe room on map, too. And it is actually more important as well, because there is no Parish Finale here. It is just the 1-4, to four, which means that, I mean, map 1 wouldn't have been as consequential before, because it is just 300 points, but if this tank manages to wipe Team Eclipse, they're going to be in a pretty deep hole just to start this and i do believe that they need to have uh kimchi go back in actually that's never mind they need to have kane go back in on the infected side to then have this happen but what we're going to be seeing then is aquilix just play their round as normal because already of course team envy went and then they'll just have to pretty much dive off the dock on the next half and then we'll set scores on the safe room in map two so that yeah, should actually is... be I don't know, we, we kind of saw it happen the other week too in, I think it was the EVO versus, was the EVO versus Bathtub Swimmers game? I think that there was one where there were more technical difficulties, but it's something that as we see it in Left 4 Dead 2, you know, there's only so much you can do about it at one time. 
honestly, it's my fault for expecting to go into a cast hearing that it's uh, Parish one to four on, on a neutral server, thinking, oh, I'll be in and out in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm, uh, apologies to both teams for, for cursing it by ever daring to assume such a thing would ever happen. <laughs> Yeah, every time, like, that's that's probably the biggest, you know, uh, eternal meme in Left 4 Dead 2 is everyone thinking that, you know, for a game that really only requires you to play, like, eight halves in a row, you're going to be out of there in 40 to 50 minutes. And that just, I agree, it should happen, but it doesn't pretty much any time that you try to play the game. I mean, C the Pugs kind of change thing nowadays because they have more of an automated way of that working, right? But in any kind of scrim or any kind of match, that's why even beforehand when Vanel had the timer on, it's like, this is just the time to make people remember that they're going to be here for longer than they thought they would be. Anyway, Team Aquilix are back on the Survivor side now. What's going to happen is they are going to essentially spawn... Actually, they might just be doing, redoing the entire round from what I'm seeing here. That Hunter is spawned up on the side, jumping in with that Charger and Jockey going to land onto Dana with a Pounce going out onto Ellis as well. So that is better damage onto them, actually, than they got on the first time. And I guess that is their slight reward for having to play this again. The tank is going to be up now, once again for Team Envy, this time into the hands of Flyby, so he does get his tank back, throwing those punches as he works his way over. He's going to climb up to the roof and is going to jump across these windows once again. This parkour has become somewhat standard in Left 4 Dead 2 just because of this route and that ladder that was added by the last stand update. K3, you pointed that out and it does give the SI a bit of an advantage in this situation as we might see a rock or two thrown to start this tank. Yeah, it's interesting to see the survivors opted to not even try for the ship because they really do not want to give the Boomer any opportunity to land. They know that it's up and the Boomer's looking for a really sneaky spawn behind that garbage can. It doesn't look like he's going to find it, but that charge is going to come and actually somehow land a slam there out onto iPad. Rock going in here, looking for something. Spoker is going in for a sack. It's going to also get a scratch. Oh, and God. We have a bug <laughs> here. The Boomer is just staring down the survivors. All right, so we have a pause from Dana and a ready up from iPad, and now this boomer is Flick looking to get Flick something. <laughs> Not going to get it, unfortunately, because the survivors did kite out of that vomit range. Tank is still now on the roof on second pass, though, so Flyby is going to be thinking about how exactly he's going to commit this in just a few seconds because he still has about eight or seven left on Kimchi's timer. He's keeping sight there just a bit, getting ready to launch his way in onto them, and that's what he's going to be doing now. Jockey Hunter Charger for the SI support once again, which is exactly what he likes, but it's a different commit path this time. Getting a punch onto Dana, turning around, getting another punch onto Ellis, trying to go for a long arm arm to coach, not going to find it, but now he's pushing Dana into the safe room over on that left hand side looking for the in cap instead now he's just going to keep wailing on dana in the corner he is going to get the in cap now turning back around looking for ellis but that is a much more favorable tank fight for team aquilix on that particular exchange and it's honestly i think because the tank chose a different commit path and they kite him out a little bit better than we saw the first time k3 yeah, that plus the benefit of not having a boomer in the spawn rotation definitely did wonders. I also think that, you know, Flyby had the Hunter cap on the one survivor, and then I think he he had a small window of opportunity where after getting that first punch that he got, he could have potentially gone, oh, I should just have a 25 there, landing on top of Caution from Flyby. Um, but yeah, uh, if he had gone for the guy who was hunted, he might have been able to get that in cap a lot faster and then had the health to kind of work with the rest of his SI. But yeah, Team, uh, uh, team Aquilex just, you know, really showing that they are ready to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and now though, I think Envy wanted to send that hit the way they did. They didn't bet on the alley here because now they are going to have this charger set up and they are going to be able to rock it onto the survivors as they push their way through the restaurant. Hunter, Charger, Jockey, and Spitter for this hit coming out from Envy. It should be their last of the chapter, barring some kind of in-cap or insane triple-cap situation that grounds Team Aquilux from where they're at, but... They are going to be looking to clear this forward area. Three shotguns and one Uzi so far as well for the survivors doing most of the work and taking their time as they do so. That alarm car, of course, is going to be a threat. Would really, really suck to be triggered at the same time as an in cap, but we're probably not going to see that as the survivors are going to flush to the right. Jockey going in, getting a little bit dated by that, I think, and fly by. Throwing that spawn right there is going to leave just the Charger Hunter and Spitter in rotation as the survivors get closer to the safe room. The SI actually repositioned on this as well, so I'm not sure if that was a bit of miscommunication or what that was. Now this Hunter is going to go in, trying to find a land. Charger does a 360 charge and misses Nick, but that is going to be safe room for a close with just a Boomer and Spitter in their way. 
Nah, man, here comes the Boomer about to put a stop to their plans. Going in, this Boomer's gonna cost them half because the tri boom landing and a, a scratch from him, I believe, as well. And that will be Team Aquilex walking into the safe room with a 276 bonus, which is a lot better than they potentially would have had uh, with that whole crash scenario. So, good recovery by them. Didn't let the crash get to their heads, and uh, yeah, tactical. <laughs> See Team Aquilix ribbing each other in their chat in a more acceptable ling linguistic fashion, I would say, than what they were spamming in all chat before. But we are now going to see something else that is very specific to competitive Left 4 Dead 2, and that is the art of the survivor suicide when you need to have a set score in the values instead of another round played. So we're going to see everyone ready up, and now they will set the score on the next map. Let's see exactly how Team NB choose to uh, meet their demise on this. We already have some of the Uzis firing in perfect fashion. Please leave Two the safe room. Please leave the safe room. Okay, yeah, exactly. There we go. Proof, <laughs> proof was paying attention, and that is going to be the quadruple suicide by the survivors on this map in order to move to the next round. The Gotham's coming out in infected chat as well, implying that, you know, eight points here would be what they got. But K3, you, you said what I was thinking. If they didn't leave the safe room, that would have been so bad. Yeah, for those watching and you do not know, if you intend to restart the round by jumping off and killing yourselves in the safe room, uh, but you do not leave the safe room, it will glitch and it will. the next round will not start and you have to completely restart the round again. And then it's even more score setting and more suicides and more things that can go wrong. And uh, I have a minor PTSD from the times I've sat here and watched teams mess up their very, very simple instructions for the restart. <laughs> and I was just like, oh man, I've got a deadline for this cast and I'm sitting here watching a team fail to die properly and, you know, it's yes, so it truly is an art form learning how like basically like keeping up with all the different bullshit mechanics that are inside this game and knowing how to properly manage each so we can carry on with the it with the very high integrity game that is Left 4 Dead 2. Exactly. And this tank is going to be at 85% here on map 2, meaning we're going to get to see both of these teams, I'm fairly sure, take the entire event prior to triggering that fight. And that really does give the SI a lot of chances to inflict damage upon them, of course, but I think there's also a way for you to work your way forward that would stop the event as you're working your way through so that you don't have to necessarily sit there that entire time and give your enemy, like, I'd say probably like five or six hits to get that bonus down prior to the tank fight or get some kind of bleeder. We'll see exactly what Envy decides to do with that as they are going to be making their way out of the safe room here on map two with a jockey charger boomer smoker to deal with. Yeah, this is definitely a big opportunity for the SI. They want to get as many hits in as possible with this. They do have the Boomer set up behind this band, looking for the very simple walk and Boom. Looking for the Arc. It's going to land the Arc. That is a great cover on the smoke separation there. Onto Rochelle, it's going to be a lot of damage there. On onto Prove. Jockey's still somehow not getting cleared, and Prove is just getting absolutely constricted by the tongue of that Smoker. Another Proxy Boom there going out onto Kimchi, and that's actually pretty phenomenal damage there by Team Aquilax onto NB on also that first hit. Indeed it was, and that was probably the best they could have hoped for in that scenario, aside from landing the multi-cap at the same time, and it's that safe room door that proved to be the obstacle for the survivors, as that charger was able to land, plus then that smoker was able to get a fair amount of damage onto the survivors from that. This is going to be an area that the survivors are working to now, though, that doesn't have as high a damage potential, just because they can back up, and I think that's why we're seeing the special infected set themselves up for some kind of alley hit versus going earlier. Yeah, I think that's the right call. I've seen, uh, you know, in pugs and matches and scrims and everything. Teams try to get, you know, the hit out here just for some extra damage, and it just allows the survivors to walk right through the the alleyway. And with a hit setup as perfect as this for the alleyway, you don't you want to make the survivors play to your pace. You make them take the chokes that you I'm want them to take. And you know, I think that's uh, really a staple of good SI play is really forcing the survivors to do what they want them to do. Indeed it is, and this hit is perfect for this, as you mentioned. Charger, Jockey, Hunter, and a Spitter, so that 3-1 with Charge Spit, looking to be sent in here now, but Kimchi is in the back, blocking as much as he can, getting the kill onto the Hunter, but standing in the doorway as the Charger comes around. That is the Charge Spit going out onto him, and he is going to be forced to take his pills after jumping onto that barricade. 
That is really unfortunate for NV. And honestly, I can say kind of what we're seeing now, right, is after that restart, I think the momentum has gone a little bit more in Aquilux's favor, at least so far. We'll see exactly where NV decide to take this event. They might be forced to take one part of it in this Cedar trailer before pushing their way forward. It is a 240 common event, one of the longest in this version of Zone Mod. Boomer is going to get M2'd and shut down, and the survivors are going to decide to move back through the map now with the Horde almost all behind them. Yeah, K3, you can kind of see this is a little bit of a risky tactic by Envy. Yeah, they're opting to like intentionally take more hits while Kimchi is already bleeding out, which is, you know, an interesting play, you know, and we do see the SI trying to go here for something, you know, are proving that they are going to be able to shut down the SI without taking too much damage, but, you know, and I and just I say the hunt spit lands and prove already taking a lot of damage and they again they rotated a, a bit kind of precariously into the alleyway instead of taking a hit underneath the overpass first and now they're sitting at already two survivors pretty much slow and with a lot of four left to hold out. Right, and this was the situation that I kind of mentioned at the start of this chapter where it would have been maybe interesting to see the survivors go forward and spawn the tank before the a common were done because now what NV are doing is they're going to hold out the entirety of the common first. They already have two people who are going to be bleeding and we could see a rock tank later if this continues to be the trend. Charger is going to whiff. Jockey gets shut down. Free Spit does go out on to prove for a bit of damage there but they are saving their pills as much as possible and are due to find at least another set forward in the map prior to, be, uh, prior to them getting to that tank. I was going to say before we even see that though this is still maybe one or two more hits to take, and they're pushing their way forward again as the common yeah. have mostly spawned behind K3. So this gives even more room, I think, for the SI to get a little bit of damage here, but the common are going to be coming from one direction. Yeah, that being said, the survivors are slow. They don't want to pop all their pills yet, and they do have a walking setup here. This could be a very important skate to land, and he doesn't land it. That's going to be spit landing on top of Proof. Great damage, just consistent damage like every single hit, and yeah. And Team MV probably not in the situation that they hoped for. As you mentioned, yeah, I do think that maybe the play would be to take one hit, especially since they knew that there was no splitter up. Take the hit inside the uh, inside the trailer, and then after the hit, then push forward to you know a location where you can hold out the next hit in the horde, and then try to spawn the tank and make sure that there's no more horde left. Exactly, and this is another chance now for Quilks to get some good damage off this. Hunter, Charger, Jockey, Boomer going in, Jockey's gonna land the front, Charger going in the back, landing onto Nick right at the end, was looking for a bowling charge, and this Jockey is only getting cleared now. That's great damage going out onto Kane. They do find another set of pills, but this is gonna be what appears to be a very special infected sided map from both teams. Aquilux are definitely in their rhythm now on SI. They're getting consistent damage each hit, and they have to be really happy about this leading into that tank, because K3, this tank is not a fun tank to commit in this area. Absolutely not. I've routinely seen, you know, survivors roll into this tank fight with, you know, like, tons and tons of health, and I think this tank fight could be a completely different story if, you know, depending on the amount of health that you have. If you have to, you know, LOS, and you, you're getting hit a lot, and the tank is going for rocks, then it could be a lot more difficult. And if you have a bunch of survivors on full HP, then this tank can be an easy shutdown. But now we do have this tank up in the hands of iPad, the crashy himself <laughs> of the last map. And he will be looking to probably play this long, I think. Exactly. And the thing is, the survivors, Kimchi and Prove, are both at 5 and 6 HP, respectively. And they have not popped those pills because they don't want to be dealing with a bleed-out tank. But they are much easier to get to the ground by these SI since they are that low. Charger's going to go in landing there after the smoker got cleared. Jockey got M2'd for its trouble and now does manage to land for a split second onto Coach. But it's such a precarious situation health-wise because Flyby and Kane are both sitting exactly at 52 HP. And now indeed, they are going to down one survivor on the top of this awning while the tank is going to be rotating to the side keeping a good amount of sight but these distance users are going to be able to rail him even through that fence once NV gets around to it beautiful oh. boomer pop going out by prove as well and this is the thing k3 ipad's on the bridge but they can rail him from where they're at yeah there's no good commit path if the survivors are paying attention there's no good way to get the tank in from any direction during this entire fight so the, that being said the, the survivors are bleeding I've had still sitting at about 45% HP, or, or rather 45% control on its first pass. You know, they are bleeding out now, and so they have to be really careful with the way that they LOS.
Indeed, they have to be, and it looks like iPad's gonna be throwing a rock here, not really going to land, unfortunately for him, and that is his second pass. Envy have to know that he's low because he hasn't been trading any site for Chip, and they also haven't really looked for it that much. We've got Kimchi pressing up to the fence here, looking for a bit more of that pre-commit Chip, but Envy are gonna have to be real careful in terms of how they flush, because they're gonna have a Jockey, Boomer, and a Charger for that special infected hit. iPad milking as much of that permanent HP as he possibly can because these Uzis really haven't been on him as much. So he's going to be committing with just about, you know, 85, 80% of his health by the time he actually drops. And by the time he gets close to them, they'll be able to kite him better, but they're going to have a full hit to deal with as well. Prove is now up top. And the bleed on both Prove and Kimchi is actually doing a fairly good amount of work right now because they're down to 62 and 57 HP, respectively, as the tank is going to roll his way in. All four survivors are on the ground. Boomer's gonna land a double boom, and that charger lands a double charge. It's actually a triple boom as the jockey lands onto Nick as well. Absolute destruction right now going out onto MV. They're meleeing a tank that has 4,000 HP as he turns back around, getting in the corner, missing a punch there onto Ooh. Rochelle, landing a triple punch on to them now he's almost dead but that was so much damage k3 uh, that was a turn of events i thought that they were for sure webbed up to the boomer and everything uh i've had with some amazing punches and also some less amazing punches there off of that tank fight a couple of whiffs that if he did land those i think it definitely would have given him the wipe uh possibly a, a couple of semi jukes there in the mix uh, i wouldn't be surprised but uh still Fantastic amount of damage. Survivors yeah, Nest gonna be basically I sitting at zero health bonus if they do manage to make the safe room and on a you know, on a game this high caliber where big bonuses are very common on this map, I think you're pretty happy with that if you can that Oh yeah, I mean they're gonna be playing the survivor round with four survivors with red ping, but that boomer did such work right there on to team NV and now they're gonna be looking to get the rest of their distance points, but there's a down again going out on to Kimchi. You know, when the tank hit that triple punch, right, he had three survivors who were meleeing him, and they started doing that, right, like, they got close quarters with that tank when he still had, like, 4,000 HP. It didn't do the same amount of damage, of course, that would have happened on the earlier configs, like Promod or something, but, like, they managed to melt the tank in an area where they should have been dead. I just don't, you know, when they had four survivors on the ground, all the spawns from up top were pretty much unblocked. The boomer got the triple boom through the scaffolding and then the charger just jumped in and got that double charge as well they're annihilating this hit with the uzi so far at least except for that hunter landing and that smoker getting a quick pull in the front but no deaths going out from that quad i don't know k3 like you said this is a pretty huge bonus map and envy are probably going to make distance on it but they're going to have to have a phenomenal special infected round to keep a cool in check yeah they definitely are and you know I think it's really crucial that they get good damage in before that tank fight because, you know, if you go into that tank fight with four greens, the ball is really in your court to play it however you want. You know, you don't have to worry about getting bled out. You just have to, you can play at your own pace and really force the tank into a horrible position. So we'll see how MV manages to mitigate that. Would you have the death there going out onto flyby? Gonna miss out on just like, you know, two distance points. So nothing really important. Again, another death out there onto Kimchi. Both original members of MV have now perished aptly as the name of the map that will be 499 points out of a possible 500 for the map sitting for a grand total of 1251 for the first two maps out of the four that we will be playing indeed and yeah the the real thing about that tank fight i was just peeking at chat for a second too it's like having everybody on that same level backing up right like maybe on green ping they would have been able to annihilate that charger and maybe, you know, pop the boomer as well. But in this kind of situation, I would be very surprised to see Aquilux copy that strategy exactly. We'll see if they're even able, though, to make it to the tank with Envy's hits coming up right now, starting with the Smoker, Jockey, Charger, and Boomer for this first hit. Yeah, definitely. And as you mentioned, like, you know, I think you could have one survivor on top of the scaffolding. It blocks a lot of the spawns. That type of thing, I think, could make a really big difference for that type of tank fight. But, uh... Yeah, all four survivors right in that hallway put themselves in a really iffy position, and now they are under pressure with this Smoker, Jockey, Treasure, Boomer hit to really put the hurt onto Team Akalax quickly uh, before they manage to make it to the tank fight. Indeed, and we are seeing a nice slow play here from Aquilux. That baiting timer is going to pop up. Here comes the rest of the hit. Charger is going to try to take that pull target, but it's not going to work as a Jockey did land for just a bit of damage, and we saw a single boom go out as well. 
as the survivors clip each other a bit with those bullets, but a pretty well taken hit on that. Almost as well, I think, as could be said for any hit that you take with this high ping on survivor side. I mean, we saw it do a decent amount of damage to Envy on the opposite half, but it's going to be each individual hit that gets sent in could have the opportunity to do a massive amount of damage just due to the logistics on this server. This 2-2, though, Jockey Hunter Boomer Spitter might be looking to go before the alley if a want to. Yeah, it looks like their sec order was not maybe as ideal as possible. Charges they're dying last, and they will not have a charge spit for this alley, which was one of the major damage dealing hits that happened to NV on their survivor half. And now Team Aqualax, I think with a, just a hunter and spitter available for the damage potential this hit, can really, the ball is in their part to kind of play this how they want it. We do have the jockey looking to initiate something. There is going to be a hunter landing with a spit there. Probably only going to deal about 10 more points of damage there out on the survivors. And yeah, decently done for the setup that they had, but again, not a lot doing. And now we're going to see if Aqualax are going to opt to push forward or if they're going to take it back. And with this amount of health, maybe taking it back is the right option. I expect they'll probably take a hit inside the trailer just because that's kind of the meta at this stage, but then it really will depend on what positioning they want to have. That area back by the park is easily the best, I would say. There are spawns all around it, however, and this is going to be a quad attempt from NV coming up. Charger, Smoker, Jockey, and Hunter positioned right now, looking to go in with the Smoker, but that actually might be a sack of the quad for a spit or something like that. The survivors, though, are going to start pushing their way backwards, and they're going to be working through a huge horde of common as they do so. So, looks as though they might be trying to get to the alley before that next spawn is up. Let's see if they make it. Charger, Jockey, Hunter, all the horde is indeed behind, so they're managing to clear this pretty well, but now the hit is going to be going in. Charger gets shut down, Hunter gets shut down, Spitter has nothing to spit on, and now the survivors are in the marquee spot to take it. Honestly, K3, that kind of looked like Equilix were deciding where they were going to have that hit come to them versus Envy throwing it in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at the the last half where, you know, Team Aqualax's SI were really determining exactly where they wanted uh, Team Envy to be hit on. You know, every single choke point that they wanted to attack on, and they, they stuck to it and it did damage every single time because they, they really committed to that strategy. Envy don't seem to know exactly where they want their attacks to come in right now, and it's proven that Aqualax is really capitalizing off of that really well and not taking a lot of damage off these hits so far. Charger is going in here again, not a lot doing. Really good ski there on to flyby by iPad and Smoker not getting much damage himself either. And now the survivors are in a very commanding position. They don't have any pressure on them to really do anything other than just keep holding out this horde. Yeah, this is going to be something now where these last 60 common are really not going to be an issue for Team Aquilix whatsoever. These hits haven't been able to do a whole lot of damage either, aside from that pound spit that we saw earlier. We are going to see another potential for that now, along with a jockey and a charger for this 3-1. Might be the last hit that NV get to send in before the survivors take the alley again, but these chargers are really being focused well by Aquilix. Those shotguns doing work as the Uzi is attempting to clear. This hit does go in with a nice pounce landing on the side. Spit going in as well. Charger is going to stumble that survivor oh. into Spit. Caution, taking a fair amount of damage, and that was the best hit Envy had so far. Definitely. The the 2021 meta of the, the Hunter, Spit, Charger going in only for the stumble is definitely coming into play in that hit there. Doing a lot of damage to Caution. Still not in the zone of bleeding out, though, and now the entire horde is dead, and there's only one possibly two quick opportunities to get any amount of damage on the survivors before this tank spawns and if there's no bleed then this is a rough tank yeah this next hit and maybe one more are going to be the chance to get some kind of bleed going on the survivor side here by team nv let's see where they decide to send it smoker jockey boomer and hunter for this hit hunter is going to bounce in managing to land silent jockey is going to land onto rochelle there for a decent amount of damage actually and everything else is going to get shut down aside from that one boom going in onto rochelle lots of health still on the survivors here they're in a much better position than we saw nv in on the last half but it is possible to get a wipe or some kind of mass amount of damage here if you can have a charge land like we saw last half or some kind of multi-cap in this kind of open space. The thing is the survivors can choose to kite this in a bunch of different ways running back down these alleys and it will depend on the support for what we see happen. Charger is going to rocket in here, landing onto Rochelle in the corner with a spit going down on top of that and the spitter is also going to go over there for good measure. Now it's looking a little bit better for Team Envy on special infected side. 
Yeah, definitely an important charge bit to land there because you, you don't want to look at, you know, like four survivors all sitting at 70 and above for this tank fight. And now the tank up in the hands of Kane for NV. This is a very important tank fight and the strategy of the SI is going to matter a lot. So I do believe we have an NV worm. How about we send it over there? Indeed we do. Let's send this over to Team NV's worm and see if they can get a wipe or a lot of damage on this tank. We don't have it anymore. We okay, don't have that it means, anymore. That's fine. That's Yikes. fine. That that crash in the first chapter, man, really just threw our entire schedule off of <laughs> its uh, balance. But instead of going to an MV war room, we're just gonna have Kane's tank here, and we'll be able to narrate everything that happens just because that's what we do. And the SI are waiting for a different hit now, as the survivors are going hard LOS behind those porta potties and also behind that wall but kane is going to rotate into the same spot that we saw caution go on top of this bridge charger smoker mm. and hunter for this next part of the hit i don't know if it's worth sending in a whole lot of hits here because he is already getting chipped fairly well on his second pass and k3 he might be committing this soon instead though we are going to be seeing this hit go in rock is going to land rock, onto man, man. ipad hunter is going to land as well but he did lose his first pass as that attack went in Still very important rock to land there. Now iPad is slow. He's gonna have to commit his pills on the commit of the tank. And now, but you see the difference here. Tank gets into this position. Instead of the four survivors all going to the same location, they manage to get two and two together. But now there's so much separation between the survivors in terms of like a map distance amount. And uh, tank actually take a solid amount of chip going up that ladder. But survivors are very separated now. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how they decide to kite this, but they have a lot more flexibility currently as opposed to the way that MB were stacked up all in that same hallway. That tank got hammered by those Uzis climbing up that wall. Oh my goodness. He's down to 4,800 just about right now. And as you can notice, this is a fairly open area for him. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get close to them before calling on SI support. Throwing a rock in though at Rochelle as a single boom lands and he's not going to commit it quite yet, it would seem. Staying alive and waiting for these common, which are coming in from the bus depot now in front. Looks as though he's waiting again for just that last spawn because the survivors are very split as you mentioned k3 two and two one survivor is on top of that scaffolding that being rochelle with the shotgun but these two survivors with uzis are trying to get even more chip onto him he's down to just about 4500 health now with a smoker a jockey and a hunter for his support hit he really i don't think can stay up here that much longer he's draining the survivors ammo but it's not the game that they're going to be playing now as the tank is going to jump in to get this commit started getting an early pull onto ipad for the corner jockey though is going to die getting shut down tank turning back around now i don't think the smoker quite yet has a recharge hunter is going to go in though and gets a stumble for him Ooh. to get another punch onto rochelle another punch landing onto rochelle but this tank is dead k3 that jockey also seemed to go a bit early for those kind of stumbles yeah, it was an interesting play to knock him with the tank during that one boom. As you did see, I believe it was Ellis and Nick walking right underneath where the tank was. Maybe they were trying to bait the tank to come in without a good support setup for it. But still, pretty solid damage from that tank fight. You know, they are sitting still at a 440 bonus, which is not terrible. But I think, you know, if you're NV and you're trying to mitigate the lead that Aquilex go into the next chapter with, then that's a pretty solid job overall. Yeah, and I'm going to say, too, that the chapters that usually cause the largest deltas on this map or the most potential for points are definitely map 3 and map 4. That boomer is going to get shut down as Kane rocketed it from the top of the bus depot, not getting much of anything. It's going to be a jockey charger and a spitter for the rest of the hit, and it looks as though they're going to be positioning themselves above the survivors' heads to hit on this alleyway. So this is going to be Team Aquilix trying to clear the rest of these common and just taking their time because they know it's probably one more hit before the safe room. Yeah, and it is a strong setup at that. It is a jockey, spitter, treasure, and hunter for this last hit of the chapter for Team NV. Looking to get a lot of, hopefully, a lot of the damage bonus off of the survivors here. Going into this really dangerous hallway, they want to preserve as much bonus as they possibly can. Hunter is ready for the walk kick up top. Is going to try to initiate, is going to chip down, and very nicely skied there, but the charge spit is going to land there. No double spit going to go on top of it. Coach is going to have oh, yes, it was. the worst. But, uh, it was? Yeah. Jeez. That I thought spitter they died. Got out of that. Yeah, they tried to M2 it, but the spitter died right at the end there, and because of spit being incredible in terms of its area of effect, it did reach Coach for a decent amount of damage there. They're going to be swinging their shovels in the air, making their way into the safe room for a total score of 1,384, two NBs, 1,251.
This obviously is still anybody's game, but I feel as though this next SI half for NV could make or break this for them just because it is easier to make points up on map 3 as opposed to map 4 and I don't know, it, it really will come down to where the tank spawns in a game like this too, but I feel like Aquilux have gotten some of the momentum just because they were able to take this early lead despite the fact that it's only 133 points. Yeah, I mean, when you're only playing four maps, anything is very valuable to have. And we will see this tank spawning. It looks at 79%, so I believe that's on top of the bridge right before you drop off of it. Oh, which yeah. Which can, can be a really big wild card of a tank fight, you know. It can really, like, if you have good card placement and good SI support, it can totally wipe. And sometimes you come up with not even a down, because the survivors have really good um, kiting pass to use against the tank. So, uh... Yeah, I'm really interested to see how that goes. But that uh, anything more than that is that like this map has zone. some several really strong choke points and definitely a lot of damage potential leading up to that. So uh, this is definitely really important for both teams to play very carefully. Indeed it is. And it looks as though we are going to have this first hit be a pretty strong one for NV. It's a Smoker, Jockey, Charger, and Spitter right off the bat. And Kimchi's going to have this tank for NV on the bridge. There are a lot of chokes for the survivors to navigate prior to getting there, including the sewer choke that is completely devastating in a number of ways if the survivors don't have their coordination specifically tailored for that hit so we'll see what happens with that as this charger is going to try to take the pull target is not going to land however but does get three almost four punches out so a decent amount of damage onto dina from that opening hit plus a smoker pull right now for just a bit more yeah i do like the call to go really quickly out onto dina when he was out by himself unfortunately this charger landing on top of his head and anyone who has been in that situation it they just know that landing that charger after landing on a survivor's head is just one of the most unfortunate circumstances that can turn potentially 40 damage hit into a 20 damage hit as we just saw indeed it's going to be a jockey hunter boomer spitter for this next setup survivors already pushing their way up to the room rochelle standing on the outside of the walkway there behind the fence jockey rockets in and manages to land onto coach hunter gets a walk kick as well on to nick boomer goes last manages to land that hit was pretty well done i would say by team envy they're getting the max damage potential they could possibly hope for aside from perhaps a stumble back into that spit it'll give them a decent hit as well for when the survivor is going to be moving into this room up ahead. Yeah, well, I do believe they sacked really? properly for the quad, if I recall correctly. And it looks like they did indeed. They sacked their support last. And I believe that they're going to attempt this quad probably outside. But it would be interesting to see them try to do it inside. Hunter's going to have to go despawn here. He's going to have to do it fast, too, because the survivor is going to be able to walk out here. And yeah, this quad attempt, very important. They actually do decide to go out while the hunter is despawning. Jockey getting M2 and completely shut down. Charger's gonna land on top of the smoke, but get instantly cleared. Hunter's gonna land for just a bit of damage, and that's gonna be very little damage coming out of that quad attempt. So is making a great call instead of deciding Man. to wait. Yeah, they, they realized that it was a quad setup, and then they realized, oh, the Hunter is despawning behind us. This is where we go before they have a chance to set up properly. So really good capitalization by them on the very small detail. Aquilix are rolling through this map, K3, and the thing is, I think they wanted to send that quad originally on the stairs, but the survivors just pushed their way through it before they could even get set up. This boomer is going to pre-spawn, though, climbing up the ladder, getting a single boom, and once again, it kind of does just feel like Aquilix are setting the pace from this, and you can say what you want to about the first chapter, but it's been a three rounds of play since then now, and Aquilix really haven't let up as they've been moving their way forward here. That boomer sacking is going to guarantee a 3-1 for this all-important ladder choke used to be the bane of everyone's existences before you could shoot on the ladder and can still do a massive amount of damage now as this 3-1 is set up with that hunter charger and jockey all pre-spawn waiting for the survivors to make the first move as this hunter bounces around to the side not getting shot at quite yet but they can chip him and dina is going to shoot an alarm car as well the survivors are going to be dropping down below to take the rest of this this is really dangerous for them k3 I don't know, man. Was that an intentional car shoot, though? Just to make sure that there is no, you know, shenanigans once they do go for the choke. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Weird. This Interesting, this, they decide to actually go down there on top of LS. They are stacking on top of LS. They actually managed to get a ton of damage. iPad's still stuck in that spit. That's a massive amount of damage there going out onto both Dina and iPad. So I was questioning the decision to go down there on the survivors that before they went up the ladder, especially with all the SI coming from the same spot. But it did manage to actually turn out in their favor, and that's a really solid amount of damage. 
I love the call by Envy, I'll say that, because look at these commons still keeping the survivors inside. They're gonna have another hit before they move out of the impound lot. Boomer spawns up and gets a nice double boom. Hunter going for the side over there. A pull forward does manage to land. That is gonna be caution, taking a fair amount of damage from that smoker. Honestly, I feel like those last couple hits right there, with this charger also going in, not quite landing much of anything, but prior to that charger, that was some of the best SI play we've seen from Envy so far, and it's because they forced the survivors to take that hit in an area that was less optimal for them, with those common coming from the top, plus the darkness of that era in the sewer is just like... It can be really, really deadly for the survivors. Now they have two, almost slow, walking towards this tank spawn, and it is up into the hands of the one and only Kimchi with a solo boom going out from behind that ambulance. Yeah, And we have a pause. Of course we do. We just have to <laughs> analyze the, the situation we have in front of us. We have the survivors sitting at, you know, Caution and Dina probably sitting both on pre-pill uh, amounts of health because you do not want to be, you know, two, three bunches before that in cap. And iPad himself has to pop his pills and uh, the tank commits. But that being said, none of the survivors have been down. None of them are bleeding out just yet. And, you know, if they are able to get out of this tank with only maybe one down, then they're sitting at still... A, a good health bonus for this map and even though those last two hits did more damage than they were looking for they managed to take all the hits before that really well so they have put themselves in a decent position and this is not below the standard for what you expect survivors to walk into this area with yeah i mean envy's hits this map have definitely been better than what we saw on map two and this tank as you mentioned can be such a wild card we're going live now and there is a single boom horde coming from the front where the tank is there are some wandering commons there as well but it is all about this flaming car kimchi says i don't feel like getting chipped by these uzis i'm gonna jump back down Common are still going to be trickling in, but one car hit here can spell absolute disaster for a survivor team. This setup is going to be a Charger, Smoker, and Hunter for the support. It looks as though he is going to be waiting just a sec to go back in with this as the Smoker is trying to pull somebody down the stairs or something. And then the tank is going to climb up, get a little bit more sight next to that hittable, but I'm interested to see what they're going to get after that Smoker sack. Yeah, interesting decision to sack the Smoker because I feel like it's definitely the easiest of the SI to land in this area, maybe looking for that jockey just to uh, like cause as much chaos as possible. But uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see the way that they intend to take this tank fight. This tank is going to be keeping sight, it would seem, actually, from this from this <laughs> railing below. Caution. You see, he's, no got the, he's got the sight on Nick. That's the thing. He has sight on Caution, and they're bleeding, and they don't see him. He's, he's not he's making noise. No. <laughs> this is this is a hell of a strategy by kimchi there's Next really level. there's really no reason for him to move yet either i mean he could send in a hit or two to get more damage the thing is it's just really hard to land si here without that tank committing with the car but looks at those survivors they're wise to it they're wise to it and now he's going to be forcing his way in oh my gosh you absolutely love to see that i don't even know if he was wise to it he just backed up a little bit and whoops no more control <laughs> Exactly. This car is going to be the biggest factor in this tank fight. Tank is going to be knocking it in towards the survivors. He's got it past the ambulance, but he's getting railed for this. At the same time, car is going to go over and is going to in-cap iPad next to the semi. Kimchi working his way in with the rest of his SI support now, getting a punch onto Rochelle. Charger jumping its way around, looking for the land onto Nick. There it is. Two survivors in the corner, punching Coach over there as well. This tank has 1800 HP left. The jockey is dead, but these two survivors are going to be slow in just a second. Kimchi getting the hit onto Dina. That's the third in cap. Getting almost another punch onto Nick. Oh my goodness. Caution the last one. Kimchi knocking him into the corner. That is the NV we were looking for. K3, what a tank that was. That was the most chaotic tank fight in that area I think I might have ever seen. That first in cap there out onto iPad you could see the panic and he didn't know whether to go back or forward and the car just soared right over top of there it actually went out of play after the hit onto him and that first in cap just put the survivors in such a horrible position because they were all in that little corner the tank had a guaranteed way to like, cap another one and yeah just really like masterfully played there by kimchi and you know caution there opted to Kite back toward his other survivors. Maybe, maybe there's a world where he kites up back away from the tank and gets the last bit of that health down and is able to pick up a survivor. But Kimchi not allowing anything and just that's really you know the envy that we've seen in the past. You know back in like 
you know, that's like 2015 prime. Oh day. yeah. Oh yeah. And it has to be said, Envy were the champions of RBT one all the way back in 2014. They're trying to be the champions of RBT five. Now hit's going to be going in. Smoker's not going to land. Charger gets dodged and all the momentum is on Envy's side. Now K3 that was a picture-perfect shutdown, and they are going to be looking to conserve as much as they can going forward here because they know this is their shot. Yeah, what a daunting force that Envy with confidence is when they're playing the way that they want to, when they're putting hits where they want you to get hits. You know, this is this is exactly the type of you're really dominating kind of like predatorial playstyle that we've seen from them in the past, and you're really kind of at the whim of how they want to take this whole map and now they're sitting at a position where all they need to do is kill the tank and then they'll be able to take the lead and just the amount of lead that they will take off of that if they don't wipe with the tank will be up for debates but we do see this really good hit going in here charger is going to land they're not going to get a full slam but that's pretty solid chip out onto mb maybe a little bit of their positioning scattered on that last time <laughs> oh. yeah nail the tongue cut there in front of the smoker's face try i guess trying to cut it with a frying pan and <laughs> did not work his way yeah, I mean, Flyby got the clear on that Charger pretty fast, and then he got a little overzealous, I think, just with the Smoker. But again, just kind of chip damage going out there. There is a Spitter in queue now for Team Aquilix, and they need to try to take that momentum back in the hits that they're going to be having right here in this house. Plus, definitely that Ladder Choke is going to be massive for them. This has the potential to do a lot of damage. Hunter, Spitter, Charger, and Jockey for Aquilix now as the survivors are pushing their way forward. Let's see where they decide to send it. These shotguns in the front looking for every possible spawn, and that's going to be Kane almost blocking the Charger spawn there. Hunter's coming from the back, Jockey from the front, Charger as well, managing to land it, but the spit already went down on the pounce target versus the charge, so that's only 10 damage to prove. Yeah, I was honestly not expecting that Charger to land where it did. I guess the Spitter was maybe not expecting it either. It looks like the Charger was kind of struggling to find where he wanted to go for when the rest of the hit was going in, but still a half decent amount of damage there going out onto Envy. But, you know, they're, they're rolling probably harder than Akalax did on their side. And now the ball's really in their court. And the Spoomer's going to miss here. Hunter's going to look for some kind of amount of damage here, but they have to get ready for the ladder hit because that's going to be one of their only opportunities to do any damage before the tank. Ooh, the Spitter, I think, was actually trying to sack, but it is going to back out now with 4 HP to its name. They might now be deciding that the Spitter is better for that hit in the alley, but I think they originally wanted a quad for that, so instead it's going to be a 3-1 with that Spitter. Smoker, Jockey, Hunter for the pinners as well. Looks as though they're going to drop one Survivor first. We don't expect to see any Survivors getting pinned up top, at least not yet, because they're going to drop as a unit down below. And I don't know, K3, without the Charger, this can still be a pretty good amount of damage, but almost all these Cappers are going to have to land. Yeah, this is not the ideal setup for this. I think, you know, with no Boomer, it's kind of hard to create the amount of chaos that you're looking for. There's not going to be any Horde to deal with. I doubt that they're going to be shooting that car alarm anytime soon. And uh, yeah, without a Charger, it's definitely hard to get a ton of damage here. But we have Coach with a really good bait there, managing to escape danger. Kane is doing the best that he can to just keep climbing up the ladder to get something to go. Because the thing is, if he were to get cleared from the smoker tongue right they would have four seconds until that smoker tongue recharges in this version of zone mod spit is going to go down on top of the hole and they're also going to get a horde from this baiting timer i do believe and indeed i think there it is double cap is going to land and here comes the horde as well plus an alarm car being triggered so this is as much horde as you could possibly hope for and kimchi got punished on that hit as and they are now going to have to deal with this obstacle in their path both the car alarm horde, another car alarm being shot. It is utter pandemonium in the impound lot right like, now. <laughs> that hit was almost so good for NB. It's like they, you know, the smoker didn't land for too long. The hunter got pretty much destroyed, and yeah, that was so close to being a really good shutdown after they capitalized on the uh, the pre spit. But uh, but they managed to get out of there with after taking a decent amount of damage from Team Echolax and. Now we've got this horde, and they're gonna have to deal with this other hit coming in here. I was looking for something. Charge is not gonna get anything there. Still looking for the hunt onto the survivors. Is gonna finally land it, but only for about one damage before getting instantly cleared. And now the survivors will be able to go forward potentially and go into the tank fight. Indeed, they might. And this common is still 
coming in from behind, but it's coming through the fence next to the red semi below. So it's really all beneath them right now, which I think they're realizing as they make their way up, they aren't being held at all on that ladder, and they can just jump on top of the ambulance and probably take this now. Jockey spawns inside looking for a latch on the coach, which he is actually going to find, but is an instantaneous clear as that free spit gets a bit of damage as well. But Envy looking pretty healthy with this. Proof Kane and Flyby are all going to be three punches. Kimchi is going to have to pop when this tank comes in or before, but they're still sitting with almost a thousand bonus from this. Actually, yeah, like this could be a huge map for them. And this tank is going to have to do a miraculous amount of work as the rest of the sport is still getting cleared out. And as you can see, they are getting stuck at the bottom of that ladder and the Uzis are absolutely ripping them. As this hit comes in, Smoker is not going to land. Charger gets annihilated and that Hunter was skeeted as well. This is a crucial tank, K3. Yeah, do or die time for Team Akalax here. You do not want to be facing a big 800 point plus potentially deficit going into the next chapter. And Survivor's moving all the way up here looking for that ship. They know that the hits down, they are not going to be ris risking uh, getting smokes just yet. And now the tank is going to be in not the best position for this. DDA, you know, I've been in this position before. You're in a playoff match and you, it's, you know, you have to do at least a lot of damage on this tank fight. And it, there's a lot of nerves at play here. So, you know, just trying to maintain your composure, get as much damage as possible. And you don't want to be going down a lot of points going into your final map on a must-win elimination round. Exactly, and the survivors have also cleared out forward here pretty well. Tank is going to be moving in though, as the survivors start working their way back, they're going to get away from this flaming car, as DDA is going to be looking to do work with this as a smoker hunter and a jockey for his support. And I think driving the survivors back there was the right idea, but the question is going to be how is this hittable going to work for him, as he does have about 90% of his health left working towards them, trying to keep some sight climbing this ladder, but is really just giving him more chip at this point. Kimchi bleeding a bit, but it's not quite enough. Here comes the commit with this car rolling down the street while on fire. DDA hitting it close to the ambulance, but not over it yet. Now it's going to go flipping over and almost land onto Rochelle. Nick is separated in the front. They're split two and two, but that's going to be the clear going out onto that smoker. The hunter's going to get cleared as well. Kimchi doing work on them as one survivor goes sliding in the corner there, but flyby jukes the tanks hittable by going onto the scaffolding, jumping back down by his lonesome. DDA in the center of this completely alone with the car flipping over, not quite landing. That car is out of play, and that is Team NV taking complete control of this game, K3. That is how you kite that tank. You know, you get the 2-2, two -two and you you bit, you have to hope that you don't get 2-capped, and really good clear there. Managing to avoid the disaster that could have happened if that 2 cap landed onto the two survivors that were separated. And from there, they just managed to, you know, just avoid the tank, and not a lot of damage we're going there and the charge spirit is going to land here it's going to deal a solid amount of damage to kane there who is one of the major health bonuses actually going to get almost income from us that is really solid damage there by some equilax but still sitting at an almost or right around a 500 health bonus so you know they're going to be rolling there's only going to be one more hit before the safe room and team nb are definitely going to be taking the lead going into map four Indeed, they are working their way forward now. No pills left, but all the survivors bleeding. They do have uh, three survivors bleeding, I should say. They do find one more set of pills as they work their way through, but they are still carrying 96% of their damage bonus, 24.4 for HB and that pill bonus as well. This last hit can do some work. It is a quad cap attempt. Hunter Smoker, Jockey Charger, as the survivors are working their way forward, but this would be a miraculous land from Team Aquilix here. Both the Hunter and the Jockey want to go from the safe room almost, as that smoker and charger is set up behind that smoker is probably going to look to grab kimchi as they push their way in but envy have made their way inside now jockey's going to get picked hunter's going to get skeeted charger is going to get melted Ooh. and that smoker has no chance envy roll their way into the safe room and bring their campaign total to 2387 k3 that is a sizable lead for map four they just walked all over that hit like it wasn't even anything I don't think a single of those SI was even visible on the screen for more than half a second before it just got completely blasted in the face and just annihilated off the face of the earth. And now, yeah, uh, staring down a 567 point deficit going into the next chapter is definitely not what you want to be if you're in the position of Team Aqualax near. 
uh, it's yeah, it's really do or die time. You have to do work with the tank. You have to do hit, work with the hits leading up to the tank. This is a 42% tank, which I believe will be spawning around after the orb drop, if I'm correct. Yeah, so that's one where the survivors could decide to all drop or send two and two to get the tank spawned. Caution is going to have to do major, major work on this tank following that last map. And I don't know, they have a, they have a chance to still get some damage on Envy before they get there. But the pool room is pretty favorable for survivors if they're able to take that spot. So we'll see exactly if they're able to do that. First hit is a smoker, Charger, Hunter, Boomer going in now. Charger is not going to land. Hunter going for a scratch after missing the pounce. We did see a momentary pull and a double boom, but K3, nothing really huge there on that first hit. Yeah, only a tiny bit of chip, and this is not the time to play for chip. This is the time where you have to play for big amounts of damage, and unfortunately not a lot of it landing there out onto NV, and they're only going to have probably two more opportunities to get any more damage out before this tank spawns, and yeah, this is a very important SI round for uh, Team Aqualux. They really have to just destroy Team MV and they have to do it fast too before they get too many points. Trying to do that right now is Team Aqualax and they are managed to get double charge into the corner with the speed going down on top of that. That's actually exactly wow. the type of thing they needed. That's going to be almost 50 points of damage out onto two of the survivors. That is a very dominating hit if they need stuff like that. Absolutely, and that double charge was immaculate with that spit going down at the exact same time. This is going to be the tank spawn to actually before Envy have to drop, so it is just a flat out pool room tank in the hands of Caution. Now, one thing we can obviously say about this match is both teams are playing on higher ping, so that means these arms have the potential to be ridiculous in here. Nice double cap landing as well with a pull and a boom in the front, so Prove and Kane are probably going to be the tank's targets, as you mentioned, K3, but he's going to be trying to get this hittable in as well, which can add even more calamity to the situation. Yeah, Caution attempting to activate Project 8-Ball, and uh, so far, not anything doing. He's not getting a lot of luck with it. He's going to have a few more opportunities, though, and I'll be interested to see if he does get that, which he does. I'm not sure if that's in the best position for getting it into the room, but we're going to have to see Team NV in a bit of a panic now. We're going to have to decide very quickly what to oh. do if that because then he's getting to punch it back down. Team MV at the ready for that, and Akash is probably not going to be able to commit with this dumpster. He's only got a couple opportunities to punch this, and he's not going to get it. Indeed, he's not. He's going to be going in with this Charger Hunter Jockey for his support. Going to need to get that early corner, and then another one most likely as he works his way in. Getting the punch onto Rochelle to start, but she is being flicked across the room as he's already down to less than 800 HP. Charger and Hunter both land. Jockey's still looking for it, but the tank actually clears the Hunter as he's going for another punch. Getting it, though, on the kimchi now. He is going to die. That's two in caps and almost a triple cap landing, but K3, that Jockey got M2'd. Yeah, that's just uh, the worst feeling if you're that jockey. You get shoved in the face right as a really nice two cap lands and the last survivor is cornered by the tank. And you just know, man, if this guy just presses that right click button just a couple seconds earlier, that's our wipe in the pool room right there. And still fantastic job there by the SI getting a lot of damage that they did, but so close to that wipe is definitely disheartening. They have to pick themselves back up and do as much damage as possible because they still have to make up over 500 points before the end of this game. Exactly, and the thing is though, this is still a massive map on Parish. It's 700 distance and an absolute ass ton of bonus that you can get on the survivor side, right? And the thing is, Prove is bleeding, Kane's bleeding, and so is Flyby. Kimchi's also right at 40 HP, so he's about to go slow too. There still are a fair number of chances for good hits from Aquilox here, so this isn't quite over yet, but they absolutely need to kill them here at the event, as this room in front is open for this Charger. Looking for a spawn, not able to get it though. That's going to be the Jockey landing onto Coach, not able to get him off the side, and this Charger in the hands of iPad still just kind of waiting as Prove is sitting there blocking that spawn. He's going to try to get it now, but it's going to be nothing going as that smoker pull also does get cleared. A great job by Prove there. Even when Coach seemed to be in utter need, decided to not leave that spawn open because he knew how dangerous it could be if that charger spawned there. And uh, it did take a decent amount of chip off that hit, but not the total disaster that could have happened if he elected to leave that spawn. So it was a good heads up play by him there. Now sitting at a position where they are at about five or 350 bonus and Team Aquilax are really in a panic to get this wipe and get it fast. 
Exactly. There's going to be one survivor down below clearing out the common. Hunter is going to land up top with a stick going down on top of that as well. Boomer is going to get laddered as he tries to boom in below, but that's Death Spit as well as a jockey landing onto Kane. I don't know, K3. The thing is, right, they have still the bonus that they do, but they're in rough shape on survivor side. Yeah, they're actually pretty consistently taking damage a lot of, of these hits and, you know, maybe not playing quite to the amount of, uh, you know, careful gameplay that they had on previous maps. And now they're taking a lot of damage on all these hits and they have to be careful because if they get wet before the safe room, then then Team Aquilas will only need, you know, like like 300, 400 points of health bonus making it in, which is not a giant, enormous of an order to do on uh, Parish Map 4. So they have to be careful to not get wet before that safe room now. Indeed they do. It's going to be a Hunter, Charger, Spitter, and a Smoker for the hit. Going in, beautiful skeet by Kane as the Smoker is going to pull with a pre-spit all over those stairs. Downing Rochelle instead of Coach on that hit. But that's going to make the bonus fall down to just about, just about 150 now. And the thing is, they're still getting a fair amount of distance points. That's the problem for Team Aquilux in that NV are just going to keep working their way forward as much as possible. Jockey Hunter and a Boomer for the rest. It's not the hit that might wipe all of them, but they need to keep getting those in caps, and then they're going to have to carry a pretty high bonus to the safe room, no doubt. Yeah, they luckily found a set of pills there for Proof, who is in fact black and white. But um, Hunter's going to maybe get picked here, and is actually, yeah, he is going to get picked there by the survivors. Great job by them. Well, single Boom is going to land there in the corner. So it's going to try to go down on something, but only get a tiny bit of shift there. and. When you're in this kind of position, going through these tight hallways with spitter hits up, and you take only five points of damage, then you're pretty happy. You're just looking for distance. You do not care about bonus anymore. Exactly, and so this jockey is going to be spawning up, maybe trying to get Envy to stop, but they're going to push their way through this hallway in the house as they work their way to the second floor. No spitter. It's going to be that quad cap. So let's see if they're able to land any of it here. Hunter's going to wall kick in. Not able to land. Does get skeeted. The charter does manage to land. Doesn't get a pound. Jockey gets M2 to end shut down, and this is NV working their way through map four, getting all of these distance points that they possibly can. And now it is getting to that point for Team Aquilix where it's like they really had to wipe them before they got these other 300 distance points that they have now. They still have another 100 to claim from this map, even with that 80 bonus left, and this is going to be a real tall order for Aquilix. Yes, gravy, gravy. This is all just bonus points you know that every single time that they are able to inch a little bit forward in this in this map then it's just like it's just extra it's just you know icing on top of the cake that is your already pretty dominant lead and yeah team <laughs> envy somehow gonna be limping into the safe room here that's gonna be probably their last attempt at uh, stopping them unless they're able to get the in cap here out onto flyby who is sitting at one hp slow but uh yeah this is all just like a lot of bonus points for them that they just managed to get all the way after that event and i don't think they dropped more than like 20 damage on any of those hits after that event i don't think so either it's really difficult sometimes to get those boomer is going to get popped as the jockey charger spitter all meet the shotguns and uzi but there's two in caps from the dreaded free spit on zone mod here but that is going to be two survivors black and white and a little bit a little bit of health bonus left plus that db that's down to 3.7 percent nv bringing their game total to 3135 this is going to require team of to make the safe room with just about a 600 point bonus k3 they're really they tall or yeah, yeah on a map where you know there's all these tight hallways Almost every single hit that you're taking is at a pretty sensible choke point. You know, it's that's it's def that's not the position you want to be in. They have to really ace the tank. I say they gotta get out of this tank fight with one in cap, two in caps, and absolutely maximum if they ace everything else. And they're really in a rough spot. They, I think, there's you know their SI coordination just kind of fell apart there on that second half of the map. Uh, for their SI side, yeah, and now it's put them in a position where they really need to play so tight. Honestly, I mean, that pool room tank, it's doable, but I expect Prove and NV to try to get that dumpster into play because that just helps the special infected so much in that spot. It would have to be done with only one survivor really getting cornered and then the SI getting completely shut down. It's doable by Aquilix, but they have this first hit to take here now. That is going to be a charger landing after that hunter. Double boom does land as well, and there's a pound going out onto Rochelle with a repull in the back. 
onto Ellis, plus that Boomer going for some kind of proxy, as the Horde is going to start working its magic, and already we see that damage starting to pile up, K3. Yeah, not the start that you want if you're seeing Aquilex here, looking to just really ace everything else on this map, or else, you know, they might be facing their elimination here, looking to make it to the semifinals match, as you said, against Team 44 Biceps, and carry on their life in the RBC5. And it is really important for them to nail this next hit. We have Hunter trying to initiate something. Is looking to get out of there on Sniff, who's separated. That is, is going to get skeeted. Treasure is going to miss there. Jockey only getting a little tiny bit of shift damage. And that's more so the type of shit then that they're going to need to replicate several times on the rest of this map if they want any chance of success. Exactly, and now they are going to be probably able to work their way upstairs as this tank has not spawned quite yet, but they're going to kill all of the common here in the pool room, and then I don't really know what you call on survivor side here, except that they're going to need to get away from those tank arms. Boomer spawns up and manages to land onto Rochelle. That's going to be a hunter and a jockey for the rest of the support, and the tank is up into the hands of Prove. 14 NV, who is throwing rocks from the alley to start before working his way around, and we might see another Project 8-Ball attempt here, K3. I think you do, because if you get it in, you put the survivors in such a horrible position that, you know, if you get those two end caps and maybe a little bit of more, then you basically seal off the game right there. If you get this dumpster in, it can be such a pain, and that's actually really good positioning. It's not going to still get it, though. Groove still here with a few opportunities to get this dumpster into play, and he is going to get it up top. Indeed he is. He's going to throw a rock as well to position it on the other side of the door frame. The hittable is not working with him yet. He is going to keep trying to wail it in, but it's not quite going to get there. It's literally spinning like a top in front of his face, and it's impossible for him to get the right angle on it right now. There it is, though, as it does make its way through. Goes shooting across the room, almost hitting Coach, and they're going to be backing up downstairs to fight him in the bar area. Ellis is going to be the one to Survivor, who is going to get cornered first. iPad is going to go down next to that booth in the corner as the SI are going to be working their way in. Tank gets a beautiful oh, double punch, no. though. There's the Charger landing. Hunter's looking for it as Proof throws a rock onto Coach, gets the in cap. There is the Jockey taking the Survivors in the opposite direction. There's the down onto Dina. No There's way. the pounce. And there is Team Envy advancing to play against 44 biceps in style with those last two tanks k3 that is an envy showcase for the second half of this game on si no kidding jeez oh, like i was looking at the first half of the game they were looking a little bit shaky they weren't really getting their footing but they really really pulled together and they they, they just said hey guys do you remember who we are oh wait a second we're NV. we can basically decide to command the pace of the game whenever we decide to choose to do so. And yeah, they just really picked up the pace on both the Survivor and SI sides and just they played it their own game. They made the Survivor, or they made Team Aqualax play the way that they wanted them to. And yeah, just really, really well done by them on both Survivor and SI sides, really commanding the second half of the game. There. That last thing there is such a brutal uh, game deciding factor. You, whether you get that dumpster in or not can really make such a huge difference. And if you do get it in there, it puts the survivors in such a horrible position. We saw it there. The dumpster didn't land onto any survivors, but still in such a panic, they had to drop down right where the tank could commit on top of their heads and get a, such a quick corner at, onto Ellis that it just allowed the tank to just, just clean up house. And that will be NV moving to the semifinals and maintaining their survival in the RPT-5. Man, that match versus 44 Biceps next week on Dark Carnival is going to be nuts because 44 Biceps won their game against EVO today, as we mentioned before, by like a cumulative total of less than 100 points. That's going to be a showdown with Envy on that map that most likely is also going to be home and away. We'll see exactly if they want to do uh, home and away versus a neutral server, but man, that was the Envy that we were looking for on those last two maps. Huge commiserations to Team Aquilix. Uh, they were a team that have been able to make it to the later stages of a few tournaments now in a row, including RBT5's top eight, and I expect to see ba them back in competition extremely soon, pretty much as soon as another tournament comes out, because they've definitely made their mark in the international community, representing Australia as well as they have, and this will be a situation now where Envy's going 
going to have another week to scrim, kind of have the lineup congeal itself, and then have that showdown on Dark Carney. So we do have another match tomorrow, of course, with Team Rehab playing against Mad Sad Bad and also Team Keyboard Warriors playing against Stuck in Rotation. So those two games will be coming on Vanilla's stream as well tomorrow. K3, any last words for this one before we sign it off? Let this silence the naysayers who said, oh, Envy's washed. Envy is not the same <laughs> that it used to be. This new lineup, they're not even all Japanese. How are they supposed to win? And let this silence all the naysayers who, who, who claim that this new version and this new iteration of Envy could not hold their own in the modern Left 4 Dead 2 competitive setting. And here they are proving that they still have the gusto. They still have the, you know, they still have that synergy that, you know, maybe even if it wasn't exactly the same, just their individual skill together was able to really come together in this game and prove that they are looking to potentially put themselves up as a contender for the title of RBT5, as well as the prize money that comes along with it. So great job to them. I'm looking forward to seeing them face off against Wood for Biceps. Uh, commiserations to Team Aqualax. They did a fantastic job in the group stage, as well as in uh, making it to this point in the playoffs. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing much more of them because they are, they have made their mark as a, like a long staying team in this community who you can expect to sign up for most major tournaments. And uh, they always put on a good show. So thanks to them for joining and for playing it out thus far. Exactly. And on behalf of everyone here at RBT5, thank you for watching this match here today. We look forward to seeing you on Vanel's channel tomorrow for the other two games from the quarterfinals. Giving a shout out, of course, to the server host as well. That actually was Team. Um, Aquilix's server that they had in LA that we were using for that one, but also Sir Please, of course, and our friends at Cedar Pug. So, for any other information, vanel has got all the links you could possibly need, and we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for those games. You're not going to want to miss, especially that Stuck in Rotation versus Keyboard Warriors game, and we'll be happy to stream it for you right here. So, on behalf of everyone here at RBT5, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We look to see you soon. Peace out.